Hi friends, welcome back to PS Desire. Today I'm excited to share with you an editing trick that I always use to enhance my photos and achieve amazing results with just two blend modes. With just two blend modes, you can turn any ordinary photo into a dreamy artistic photos. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the process, step by step process, so you can easily follow along with me and create stunning images on your own. Are you ready to get started? Let's take a look at the photo. For this tutorial, I have chosen a regular unedited photo straight from the camera. When we are trying to create a fine art look, there are a couple of things we need to keep in mind. The first thing we need to do is to darken the surroundings of our subject so that the main focus is only on the main subject. This is an important step no matter what our subject is, whether it's a baby, a woman, a flower or even a product we are photographing. By darkening the surroundings, we can create a more dramatic effect and draw the viewer's attention directly towards the subject. One of the easiest ways to darken the surroundings of our subject is to duplicate the background layer by using shortcut Ctrl or Command plus J. This will create a new layer that is identical to the background layer. After we have created a duplicated layer, next step is to change the blending mode of the new layer to multiply. This blending mode will darken the layer and create a more dramatic effect on the image. It's important to remember that the opacity of the new layer should be lower. In the case of this photo, we are working with an opacity of around 60% looks good. But this can vary depending on the image and the overall effect we are trying to achieve. Once we have darkened the surroundings of our subject, the next important step is to add focus on the subject by lightening the highlight areas. This will help to draw the viewer's attention towards the subject and create a more balanced image. To do this, we can duplicate the background layer again, Ctrl or Command plus J and move it to the top of the layer stack. Once we have done this, we can change the blending mode of the new layer to screen. In some cases, we may choose to use lighten instead depending on the specific needs of the image. But I personally prefer to use screen for this instance. This is because it tends to create a more natural and subtle effect that is well suited to most of the photos. Now have a look. This blending mode will lighten the highlights in the image. Now we can further refine the effect by adjusting the layer mask. This will help us to control which areas of the image are lightened and which areas are not. To do this, we can double click on the new layer to open the blending options. From here, we can go to the underlying section and hold down the Alt or Option key. This will allow us to split the triangle in half and move it completely to the left side. This will ensure that only the lighter areas of the image are visible on this layer. After we have done this, we can click OK to apply the changes. Next, we can add an inverted layer mask to this layer. We can do this easily by hold down the Alt or Option key and click on this layer mask icon. This will add inverted layer mask that hides everything from this layer. Next step is to use a soft edge brush to selectively reveal the areas of the image that we want to be lightened. To do this, we can take a soft edge brush and set the flow to a small percentage such as 5% is enough. We should also make sure to set the foreground color to white and choose a soft edge brush to avoid creating any harsh edges. Once we have done this, we can zoom in on the image and start painting on the face using the brush like this. This step may seem a bit uh, difficult to deal with at first, but it is actually very easy to do if you follow my instructions. First of all, we should start by painting slowly and gradually following the contours of the face and focusing on the highlighted areas like this. By using a soft edge brush and a low flow rate, we can build up the effect gradually and avoid creating any harsh or unnatural looking edges. As we paint, we should also keep in mind the overall composition of the image and try to create a balanced and harmonious effect. This may involve painting in different areas of the image depending on the specific needs 
of your photograph. Now we can start by scrolling up to the hair area and using the same soft edge brush to paint on the hair, focusing on the highlighted areas. This will help to bring out the details in the hair and create a more three dimensional effect. Next, we can focus on the eyes. By painting on the iris like this, we can make the eyes pop and create a more striking look. We should also take the time to paint on the whites of the eyes as this will help to make the eyes look more brighter and more attractive. Eyes are very important in portrait photography and by taking the time to enhance them, we can create a more captivating and engaging photo. Finally, we can move on to the legs and start painting on them slowly and gradually using the same soft edge brush and focusing on the highlighted areas. This will help to bring out the details in the legs and create a more balanced and harmonious effect in the overall composition. Now, I want to add a red texture. This can really help to enhance the skin tones and add more depth and richness to the photograph. You can find many different textures online or I will provide you this texture to download for free. You can also use this as a texture backgrounds for studio photo shoots. If you look at the mask, you may notice that I didn't paint very well. It's important to take your time when painting and not worry too much about perfection in this stage. You can always go back and refine the painting later on. No problem. You can take your time when painting. For example, if you don't want to use a texture, you can simply use a dark red solid color adjustment and change the blending mode to soft light. I want to remove the texture from the layer and keep only the color. We can do that by blurring the layer using the Gaussian blur filter. Simply go to filter, blur, select Gaussian blur and set the radius to a very high value. This will help to blur the texture and leave only the color. And once you're done, click OK. This will give you a similar effect and help to bring out the colors in the photo. Now you can blend the color with the underlying layer by simply double click on this color layer and adjust the blending options. Since the color is quite dark, we need to adjust the dark slider to blend it properly with the underlying layer. To do this, hold on the Alt or Option key and click on the half of the triangle on the dark slider. This will split the triangle in two parts, which allows us to adjust the position of the midpoint. Now move the midpoint to the right until you achieve the desired blending effect. You can adjust this accordingly to your preference. Once you have adjusted the midpoint, click OK to apply the blending options. Finally, I want to change the grass color to something like teal green. I'm going to add color loot to give overall image a cinematic look and also to change this grass color. Here there is a lot of default presets available in the drop down. Choose any one that matches to your editing. For this instance, this Kodak 5205 looks good to me and also grass looks teal green which I wanted. Now we need to ensure that this effect is applied only to the darker parts of the photo. So you can use the apply image function. Go to image, apply image, you can see this checkbox. This allows you to choose whether the effect is applied only to the dark or light areas of the image. In this case, we want to affect 
to be applied only to the dark areas. So you should check the corresponding box. Now click OK. This will help ensure that effect looks natural and not overdone. Let's reduce the reds on skin tones and we can do that by simply double clicking on the texture layer to open its blending options. Now adjust the slider to reduce the red. We can do this by moving the middle slider towards the right and also we can also adjust the other slider to the left side. This will decrease the amount of reds in the texture layer. I mentioned earlier that I didn't paint well for the mask so to fix the mask we can hold down the Alt or Option key and click on the layer mask to view it. This will show you the areas that are visible in white and hidden in black. Now we need to paint on areas where you want the effect to be visible. Make sure that the layer mask thumbnail is sele selected. Choose a brush with a soft edge and set the foreground color to white. Then paint over the areas that you want to reveal the effect. We need to paint on dress as well to look more detailed and highlighted. So we need to lower the brush size and paint on the highlighted areas of the dress such as folds with a white brush. Make sure that you are still working on the layer mask and not on the layer itself so that you can reveal the effect only in the areas that you want. If you feel that image is too dark or too intense, it's always good to adjust the settings accordingly to your personal preference and don't worry if you didn't paint the mask well, you can always go back and touch up the areas that you want to enhance. Now take a look, the skin tones are now more natural and the details on the dress are more prominent. The change in the grass color to teal green is quite a unique touch and it gives the image a different feel. Here is the before and after. I hope you like this editing trick which is very simple and easy. If you enjoyed this video, please give this video like, share with friends and also comment what you think about this video. If you want to see more tips, tricks and techniques, don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell to get notifications from this channel. Please consider to become channel member for any direct downloads and also support me on Patreon. That's it for this video guys, see you again in my next video, take care and happy editing.